What's going on, everyone? Hope you're doing well. I just had like a allergy attack, so hopefully that won't happen on camera. Hopefully I got that out of my system, but the allergies are real. Anybody who's suffering from them knows it. Hey, and I'm going to have uh, these in uh, just because I left my case in the car and I don't want to lose these, so I'm going to keep them in my ears and then go. My case was low. The battery was low, so I had to plug it up and I forgot them. But today... <clears throat> It's a Friday, so we are going to uh, finish up Pompeii. Not too much left. We don't have a lot left. So remember, Irina Sendler, the Google form is due today. The final vocabulary quiz for the words on the wall, that's due today. Irina Sendler will be due, to, uh, will be due next Friday. Three-day weekend coming up. Things are looking good. And then also, before we get into Pompeii, um, I would like to show you this thing, and that is question, new question on Google Classroom. You know, you, you don't have to vote, but it's just like in the, you know, the real elections. If you don't vote, then you can't complain about who won, right? So we got seven wonders of the world, and I'm wondering which of those you want to study first. I mean, obviously, we're not going to study all seven, <clears throat> maybe one, two, three, I don't know. Maybe we'll do something after we study one of the seven wonders. But there's a list there. We talked about all of them in each class yesterday. And then today, what I would like to do is start off with one of my uh, favorite YouTubers. His name is Simon Wilson. Um, good stuff. He travels all around the world. Uh, but one thing he did, and I don't know if he, you know, messed with the time or whatever, but he visited each of the seven wonders in one week. So seven days, a new wonder each day. I don't know. It's it's barely possible. You'll notice that Machu Picchu is not on his list as we go through it. Might take us a few days to watch, but uh, he changed it. It had been a while since I've seen it, uh, since I saw it, but I thought he did the Eiffel Tower, but he didn't. He did um, the Great Pyramids instead which I would consider them, you know, we talked about yesterday, there are a couple different lists and not everybody agrees on like the seven wonders of the world. So, you know, Stonehenge might be up there and stuff like that. But uh, he did the pyramids instead of Machu Picchu. And like we talked about yesterday, Machu Picchu is, is difficult to get to. So I don't know, which one of the seven wonders do you think we should study first? Remember, I'm not trying to not trying to sway the vote, but this time, by this time next year, I will have been to at least Christ the Redeemer. And I don't know, maybe Chichen Itza in uh, Mexico. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But that, that would be an easy one to get to. Not too hard. But Great Wall, you know, Taj Mahal, so many. I think, did we, in this class, we have talked about the Taj Mahal briefly, I thought, for something we did in that area. Could have been last year. Anyways, let's get Pompeii out of the way by the end of uh today you will be able to complete all of the questions and to be honest you know you could have completed them all already which several people have done they're just like you know i'm gonna read ahead boom get it over with hey cool they had other stuff to do love it i was gonna name them but i'm not going to i don't want to embarrass them but if you want to name yourself that's that's fine uh quite a few in class c all right, we ended right he right up here, digging for victims. And I'm glad that we watched that video that we did yesterday because some of the things mentioned in the article today were mentioned in the video yesterday. So you hear it kind of two times in two different ways. You're like, mm. And one thing I learned yesterday is going to come up today. Like, I didn't realize this. I didn't really study Pompeii that much before. Uh, today, like this unit. So there's one thing that was new to me. We'll get to it. Maybe it was new to you. Maybe not. It seems like there are a few people on the team that know quite a bit about Pompeii. So, all right, digging for victims. All the victims of Pompeii slept under the ash for almost 1,700 years. In 1748, archaeologists began to dig down into the city that lay beneath Mount Vesuvius. What they found was eerie. It seemed that the dead were alive, yet frozen in time. One was sitting on a couch, another standing near his mule, another was raising her hands to the sky. So you can imagine that must have been horrible. 
they talked about how some people probably inhaled so much ash that that was the cause of their death. And I would almost think you, I've heard like, oh, drowning is one of the worst ways to go. I would think that is equally bad because you're inhaling like burning like substances, you know, they're like kind of solid. It's not liquid, but um, that must be, you know, because you're essentially suffocating and you know, you know what's happening. So that's probably why her arms are raised. That sounds awful to me. All right. Between the rows of clay pots on display in the form, the diggers found an empty space in the hardened volcanic ash. Looked like a figure of a man crouched in fear with his hands covering his face. These human remains were discovered by, uh, that definitely looks like an Italian name. So I'll do my best uh, Italian pronunciation here. Amando Mauri, Pompeii's chief archaeologist from 1924 to 1961. Some on Mauri's team poured plaster into the empty space left by the body. The figure was called the mule tear or mule man because bones of a mule were nearby. Now, I thought, maybe you knew this, but I thought the bodies on display were like actual bodies, just they were encased in ash. But I guess the archaeologists made a mold with that. So what you see are not actual bodies. It's just molds and plaster of the body. So I, I just thought they were like mummified or whatever. Shows you how much I know. More than a hundred plaster casts of bodies that tried to survive the deadly ash have been made. So far, around 1,150 bodies have been found. Experts in search of information. Mary Beard, she appears in two of our questions, has written a best-selling book and done two television documentaries about Pompeii. She uses modern-day x-rays and scans to help explain daily life in towns around Vesuvius. These places were not big Roman cities, more like small country towns. Between 10,000 and 20,000 people lived in towns like Pompeii. In the ruins of Pompeii, archaeologist Sophie Hay searches for information about the everyday experiences of people in the Roman lower classes that included soldiers, street traders, and slaves. She found old loaves of bread burned to a crisp and tools used by workmen and doctors. There are doormats spelling out, beware of the dog. And even graffiti on the walls proclaiming that, and I'm not really good with uh, Roman names here, but... That person, Antiochus, hung out here with his girlfriend, Katheria. Um, oh, the, the next one hurts. But uh, after watching that video, you know, hung out here with his girlfriend, it was probably a little more lewd than that, but they they changed it for our article, so which is good. But, you know, it pro probably said something else. So graffiti on the wall. And then this poor, this hit home right here. This hurts. A papria. You are bald. Stinging right there. Like that that person, just like me, you know, probably has a mirror. Like right now, I'm kind of looking at myself. I realize I'm bald. I do not need to be told that I'm bald. I have to look at that every morning in the mirror. But, you know, it hurts. Hurt. I'm glad nobody has written that on like the bathroom wall. Mr. Watson's bald. Like everybody knows it. That's just, it's unnecessary because that person probably already knows that they're probably dealing with some kind of internal struggle, you know. Anyways, poor guy. If it is a guy, it might be, it ends with an A. A lot of, you know, kind of names we think of as female end with vowels. So maybe it's a woman. That would be probably more hurtful. Look at this. This is uh, very philosophical here. A small problem gets larger if you ignore it. Now, I like that. That's actually true. Written on a wall of a church. With Vesuvius just off in the distance, it seems to predict something would happen. At the time, Pliny wrote about small earthquakes in the area, but he was ignored. Now, I'm not sure which Pliny they're talking about. Are they talking about the Admiral Pliny the Elder? Or are they talking about Pliny the Younger? Because this guy was only like 17, Pliny the Younger. Since the devastation, the volcano has erupted more than 30 times. The last time was in 1944, which... We learned in the video, you know, that thing is due. It's about to blow here. Saving Pompeii. Vesuvius remains one of the most dangerous volcanoes with millions of people living near it. You remember, I think in the vicinity, there was something like 6 million 
and there were um, 600,000 in the danger zone. Yet the more urgent threat to Pompeii is not the volcano. Weather, heavy rains and thousands of tourists cause great damage. Many buildings and monuments have been wearing down and collapsing. Uh, just a side note, uh, Chichen Itza, maybe, maybe that's the one we'll study, the one in Mexico. Uh, up until very recently, I think just before the pandemic, 2018, 19 or something, tourists were able to climb that structure. But because of the wear and tear of thousands of tourists uh, a day walking up that, if they so choose, um, they're done. It's like you can't climb that thing anymore. So I think I think if we watch the Chichen Itza thing, uh, Simon Wilson is going to have a, a tour guide and he's going to tell us that. So maybe they should do. If you remember earlier in the article, it said like there's just kind of certain places you can go in Pompeii now. So maybe they're trying to limit that. Hopefully try to preserve it. The Italian government. And the EU, European Union, have created the Great Pompeii Project to save the city. This is definitely one of the questions. Well, what the heck is that? Well, in 1997, the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization never knew it was called that. But you will hear UNESCO quite a bit. And Italy has the most UNESCO sites in the world. And um, Pompeii is obviously one of them. And if there's um, if you if it's a UNESCO site, for some reason, we'll learn in a minute. But for some reason, it's like important to human civilization for some reason. All right. Back to this. Almost done. Listed as a World Heritage Site. This means that Pompeii is a place that has universal cultural value to the world. But today, UNESCO warns that Pompeii might be placed on the list of world heritage in danger. Last year, the EU threatened to stop paying for work on the buried city. Many felt the workers were moving too slowly. So this is another question we have, two differences of opinion. Some people feel that the work is going too slowly. Work is now progressing more quickly. New problems, however, are coming from people who believe the digging is causing more harm than good. Beard wants new digging to stop. One third of the town is underground, and that is where it should stay, safe and sound for the future, she says. In the meanwhile, we can look after the other two thirds as best we can, delaying its collapse as far as is reasonable. So here's another person who's going to have the opposite opinion. Another expert on Pompeii, Paul Zanker, said that there is no need for archaeologists to return to previously excavated parts of the city with new research questions in mind. And I think this is the best advice, to reassess what we can learn from what is already visible rather than excavate parts of the city and add to the issue of conservation. Many people worry that Pompeii could be lost again on the way to being found. So there are some archaeologists say, let's dig, dig, baby, dig. And there are some that's like, hey, we got two thirds of it. Like, let's, let's just study this, save that, other third for another generation or whatever, but we got enough. I think I just answered one of the questions for you. So we'll watch a little bit of uh, the Coliseum. Simon Wilson is going to begin his quest to visit Seven Wonders in Seven Days and then um, work in class. And then if there's time, a little Criers Cross and then three day weekend at some point, especially if you're class D. We're like really close to the weekend. If you're class, what do we start with? C? No. A? B? One of those. You would think I would know the schedule by now, but we start with maybe E. I don't know. It shouldn't be this tough. Anyways, we'll start with a class and we'll end with a class. I think it's E. We start with E. Yeah. Anyways, if you're in E, we got a ways to go for the day. But if you're in a D, we're like just about ready to go home. All right.